Yeah, Wednesday. Welcome into Sportsline. I'm Eric Casilius, and oh, yeah. We got a huge trade in the NFL. See the Super Bowl odds changed? Yeah, they actually altered the Super Bowl odds. And there is value and value and value in the NFL. Can't wait to bring in my guys and get into that. Plus, baseball. Of course, we got the NBA going. And final four. Number is on the move. What do you need to grab right now? Well, let's do it. No sense messing around. Let's get right to it. Here's your trade. Stephon Diggs is going to the Houston Texans. And look, here's how the Super Bowl odds have changed. Texans were 25 to 1. Then they went to 20 to 1. Now they're down to 16 to 1. Bills holding steady at 12 to 1. You know, one thing about Diggs, it's not like he was good last year. I mean, basically after midseason, he didn't do much. So I know everybody's freaking out here, but are the Bills really worse? And they're going to be a lot healthier this year. Fascinating deal for both teams, as you see there. All right, everybody in the pool, let's go. See you in the shot. Alex Selznick, Todd Furman. I'm Eric Casilius. All right, here's, I think, the easiest way to do this because there's so many things in moving parts, right? Super Bowl odds are different. Over-under win totals, player props, division numbers. We'll first go AFC East where the Bills are because they lost the guy, and then we'll go AFC South, all right? And you can just give me, what do you like right now regarding that division, all right? A lot of open space, a lot of landscape for you. Todd Furman, AFC East first, what do you like? You know, I think it's interesting because everyone sees some of these impact players from a fantasy standpoint, and in my opinion, they overreact. So Buffalo's numbers won't change that much, although you do worry about them having a go-to wide receiver. I think, if anything, you start to identify Dalton Kincaid arguably as their primary offensive weapon. So that's probably the angle that I would look to take in the prop market. Once you begin to see over-unders populate for his yardage, his touchdowns and catches, you saw some of that rapport emerge with Josh Allen last year when Dawson Knox missed some time with injury. But you look at the other teams in the division. The Dolphins not going to be as good this year as what we saw last year, but they should be healthier than what they dealt with. Everyone wants to talk about the Jets and them essentially going into the retirement home to bolster that offensive line, bring in some other reinforcements, and the Patriots more or less an afterthought. So I think the demise of the Bills is a little bit overblown. But the one thing that I do believe is worth considering is if the Bills were willing to take a $31 million dead cap hit with Stephon Diggs, and we saw some of that unrest, so to speak, in the locker room, maybe it becomes addition by subtraction, and this officially becomes Josh Allen's team. So let that division price continue to drift. If we got out to that 180, 190 range with too much Jets love, that's probably the price where I'd be willing to jump in and take a shot with Buffalo. All right, uh, and you mentioned $31 million dead cap money hit, biggest ever for a wide receiver. So clearly, it was like, get him out of here. Now, say get a second-round pick. And I you know, spent a lot of time talking to the Patriot guys, how you built your team, how did that. And, you know, Scott Pioli was one of those, said second-round picks are gold. We did the math and looked at second-round picks and first-round picks are not that different. You pay them a lot less. But number of second contracts, number of Pro Bowls, number of All-Pros, number of Hall of Famers, they're not that different. And they get a second round pick coming back. See ya, AFC East, you like what? Well, listen, I like what you said about the second round pick. I mean, the good news for Bills fans, I don't think this Stefan Diggs loss, quote unquote, is a huge loss. The bad news for Bills fans, I don't think this Stefan Diggs loss is a huge loss. I I think the Bills are exactly where they were going to be, to be honest with you, especially uh, acquiring that second round pick. What I really like here is the New York Jets. Listen, I know the New York Jets took a lot of guys in the offseason that are are much older. We'll see if they have impact. But this was a very good team. It was a very good defense. And it was without Aaron Rodgers. Vice presidential candidate. Oh, I'm just joking about that. Clearly, that wasn't an actual thing. But if Aaron Rodgers is healthy this year, I think the Bills are on their way down, frankly. And I don't know what to expect from the Miami Dolphins. I think the Jets at plus 240 is borderline stealing. I'm going to make that play, and we can all celebrate next offseason in the Caribbean. You're welcome, everybody. I'm with you. Look, you and I are are, are old school Gene Ryburn match game. That's exactly what I have. To me, when I look at the AFC East, my play is I like the Jets at plus 240 now a lot more. I don't think the Patriots are going to contend for the division. Fine. I I don't think the Dolphins are better. They're losing guys. And you know what? You know, I'll say what a lot of people are thinking and don't want to say out loud. Their coach is weird. All right? He's a weird guy. 
I'm not saying he's a great coach. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. But when you watch Hard Knocks, you're like, that act will play while they're winning. That act is not going to play when things don't go well and if they don't get off to a good start. And with the Bills, we are essentially a Josh Allen Nick or injury or whatever. And that guy takes a lot of hits away from, to me, the Jets being the clear favorite in the division. So give me all that Jet stock at plus 240 now. I don't think it's going to be there later. Alex Selznick, AFC East, fade, follow, anything at all. What do you like based on the news of Stephon Diggs being traded? Yeah, I'm primarily looking at this from a player prop standpoint, obviously. here, I really uh, love what Todd mentioned about Dalton Kincaid. I think this really opens up Dalton Kincaid uh, as the primary target in this Buffalo offense. I also agree with both Todd and Sia when they talked about this being an addition by subtraction. We saw the results uh, towards the second half of the season. Uh, really wasn't working with Stefan Diggs. There have been you know, rumblings that it hadn't been working for a while there either. I often t- think that when you have a number one alpha wide receiver sometimes the quarterback can force feed you know targets to them and it kind of uh, uh is at the expense of the remainder of the offense we saw when Diggs wasn't getting 15 plus targets per game really opened things up for this buffalo offense saw them really run the ball effectively uh with james cook so uh, i think this is ultimately a good thing i know buffalo is probably not done as far as adding more talent to that wide receiver group obviously curtis samuels is a free agent addition there so yeah i think this ultimately is a good thing for buffalo's offense i do think dalton Kincaid could flirt with 100 receptions next year all right a little over there maybe on Dalton Kincaid all right let's go to the AFC South look I I mean Nico Collins Tank Dell Stephon Diggs can everybody catch passes is Stephon Diggs going to be any happier there CJ Stroud is he ascend or does he go sophomore slump Texans essentially pretty close to even money you're actually getting a dollar ten to win the AFC South, you see the rest of those. If you want to look win totals, Titans six and a half. Jacksonville and India are eight and a half. Houston is one game better at nine and a half. Uh, let's go see it. You're first, AFC South. What do you like? I hate to take the chalk here, but I love to take the chalk here. Give me the Houston Texans plus 110. This is really a process of elimination here. I, I like what they did to add Diggs, but Diggs is going to get used to, I think, uh, at least here and there, he's going to have to get used to box scores of three catches for 26 yards because you mentioned it. Tank Dell, Nico Collins, don't forget about Dalton Schultz and Joe Mixon acquisition in the offseason. There are so many weapons. Good news for Diggs. I don't think he's going to be that mad about the, the bad box scores if they keep winning, and I do think they're going to win the division. I think this team is going to have a pretty big impact. When I look at an offense in Jacksonville led by Trevor Lawrence, I'm just not that impressed. When I look at Anthony Richardson, I'm pretty impressed with him, but I can't guarantee he's going to stay healthy all season. And even if he does, I still think Houston is better and the Titans aren't there yet. I know it's kind of a short number for a division favorite here, plus 110, uh, but I'm going to take it. I I think this Houston Texans team is on the rise. I would have said that with or without Stefan Diggs. Diggs certainly helps the matter. Todd? Yeah, look, I think what Sia said about the Texans being rightful favorites is no doubt warranted. And we've seen this number shortened throughout the course of the offseason. Believe they open more in that plus 170, plus 180 range. But you look at what Houston is doing, and we've talked about it at great length, CK. The ways to win in the NFL, you get a transcendent talent that you give life-changing money to like Patrick Mahomes, or you go all in with a rookie quarterback. And that's kind of how the Houston Texans view the next couple of years. You look at the one-year deals that they've done to bolster that secondary, Jeffrey Okuda, one year, 4.75 million. You bring in Desmond King, you bring in Lonnie Johnson. You give two-year deal to Daniil Hunter to pair him up with Will Anderson on the other side. So I think Houston is all hands on deck. They really believe last year and what they saw from C.J. Stroud during his rookie campaign is something that is easily repeated in this upcoming year. The problem that I have with Houston is, let's see if pressure bursts pipes. I mean, this was a team last year that was able to sneak up on some teams early in the year. I still have some questions about Bobby Slowick as the offensive coordinator and how he's going to get all these pieces involved, but it really does become a wealth of riches. So if the Texans hold up on the offensive and defensive line, they are more than warranted in terms of being a favorite in the AFC South. I think for all the cases that Alex and I made for Dalton Kincaid going over, Stephon Diggs may be an under candidate knowing how many receivers will have to eat. And we didn't even mention Noah Brown, who they brought back on a second consecutive one-year deal. So the Texans, worthy of being a favorite, not worthy of getting a bet this far out in what I think is quickly becoming one of the most intriguing divisions in the league. Because even the Titans, predicted by odds makers to come up in fourth spot, are have the shortest odds for any team scheduled to finish fourth across the entire league. 
Yeah, I like Stephon Diggs under when they post those props. You know, what nobody wants, he wasn't any good last year in terms of production. He wasn't productive. He was 50 yards a game for the vast majority of the year and down the stretch. This was a guy who became a possession receiver who looked like he lost a step. He didn't have a single 100-yard game in their last 13 games. He had three touchdowns in their last 13 games. They're losing a guy who's 48 yards and a touchdown a month. That's what he was. Alex Selznick, what do you like here? I do think Diggs is... uh... His decline may be a bit overstated, EK. I agree. The numbers weren't great down the stretch. I did think, uh, I do think that a change of scenery will ultimately benefit him. I do think he'll be on his best behavior in a new environment as well. Obviously, being in a high powered, high octane passing attack like Houston uh, could certainly uh, benefit Diggs quite a bit. Looking at this from a prop standpoint, uh, I, I agree. I would look to fade Diggs depending on what the numbers are. I also think Nico Collins uh, will potentially lose out in this spot. I think Tank Dell, his role is more secure as that outside explosive downfield threat. Nico Collins primarily running a lot of his routes out of the slot. I think he will be splitting some of that work with Stephon Diggs. I ultimately think that uh, Collins will be losing out some of those targets, some of those uh, yeah looks out of the slot. So those will be some guys I look at in the player prop market. Yeah, I'll go under eight and a half touchdowns all day long with Stephon Diggs. Um, look, here's where I'm going to go here. I- I'm going to fade the Houston Texans and I'm going to pick a different team. I don't know if Diggs isn't done. 13 straight games without 100 yards and he's not a big guy, right? And when you lose a step as a small receiver, it shows up, right? It's not like Mike Evans who's 6'5", 240, loses a step and still throw it to him. I don't know how much he's like. I don't know what's going on there, but I know it's not right. They got a lot of new guys. A lot of guys are going to be complaining. A lot of guys on short deals. A lot of guys are going to need their action and want to get paid. You got sophomore slump written all over this quarterback. And if you look at it, it's not him personally. If you look, for every Dan Marino who took a light year leap in their second year, there are five guys that slumped their sophomore year. It is more likely that you sophomore slump. And they now have a first place schedule this year. A first place schedule. You know who I like? I like the Colts. And I'm at plus 320. I got Jonathan Taylor for the whole year. They didn't even have Anthony Richardson. And they were right there at the end in the last week. What if Anthony Richardson is good? What if he's actually good? On the over-under, they're only one game behind the Texans. And I'm getting three times the money if they win the division. And oh, by the way, here's the other secret I'll say out loud. I would have voted for D'Amico Ryans for coach of the year. Absolutely. But to me, the best coach in the division is the guy in Indy. I saw what he did last year. I love that guy. I like their coach. I like their running back. I like their talent. I love their odds at plus 320. That's how I would play the AFC South right now and take it and go against the Texans. Uh, everybody made smart plays. Boy, you guys are pretty much convinced a lot of the things that you guys were saying. And you remember, here's your deal, right? Texans get digs and a couple of late picks. Bills get a second rounder. Bills also get 31 million as a hit dead cap money. Largest ever for a wide receiver. Straight ahead. Top props NBA next. I'm Eric Casilius. Yes, sports line.